Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. If you've never been here before, on Tuesdays what we do here is we do deep dives into the environmental, social and ethical issues with the beauty industry. You can also check me out on Instagram. We are recreating my Cinderella makeup look today because there is going to be a separate video showing you how to do just the glitter part of this cut crease to make sure that you don't get glitter like constantly flying everywhere throughout the whole night. So check me out on Instagram right here because that video is going to be uploaded on there for you. I stumbled across this hashtag blue beauty thing and I was like oh my god what is this so I asked on my Instagram stories whether you would actually like a quick little video into blue beauty and what it is and if it's more green washing and whatever so that's just another reason for you to follow me on Instagram right here so let's just jump into this issue because we're going to talk about the who the what the when the why and all of that lovely fun stuff and then also final thoughts, conclusions, all of my resources down below, everything that's on my face is in the description box down below as well, and it's of course cruelty free, vegan, non by parent companies that test my animals, and let's just jump into it. If you can hear this rain ASMR, you are so welcome, oh my gosh, welcome to winter in New Zealand. So who won't win with hashtag blue beauty? Blue beauty was actually founded by Jeannie Jarnett who is the founder of Beauty Heroes, which is a Blue Beauty subscription box. So she actually created this business in 2014. So before like green beauty was like literally everywhere. So that's cool, that's all good. I'm not gonna hate on someone starting a business with good intentions. Now of course this is based in California. I say this because I really want to go there. I don't think that this company would have been started anywhere other than California. Yes, everything I'm saying now is purely out of jealousy because I can't wait to be able to go there one day. So you may be asking the same question as me. A subscription box though? Like, how is a subscription box sustainable? Like, I'm not really that big a fan of them. I guess the only justification that could really be had for it, saying that a subscription box service was sustainable is by saying that it's actually promoting like these blue beauty brands to people to give them a chance to try them out and then be able to buy them later on because otherwise people won't know what brands that they can or cannot support. At least that's kind of in my mind the way it works because I'm like it just doesn't really feel all that sustainable to get new stuff every single month when normally when I buy makeup I only buy it like very rarely actually. <laughs> But yeah, for me it's honestly challenging because you're meant to consume less to do better for the planet, but then the subscription box is based on products that you should be buying instead of the ones that you would be buying anyway. I'd almost prefer if subscription boxes could be like, I don't know, once a quarter or at least like every two months instead of every single month. I think too much about this sort of stuff. But yeah, I mean, obviously I'm saying all of this with the knowledge that I'm not a climate scientist, I'm literally just someone that's interested in the environment, which is why we're talking about Blue Beauty today. So with Blue Beauty, what is the point of it when you already have Green Beauty? The whole point, from what I've been able to gather from everything that Janine has actually said, is it is Green Beauty but with more of a conscience. So it's like Green Beauty but elevated. So what we need to do is we need to actually talk about the difference between Blue Beauty and Green Beauty because it can be quite confusing because in most areas they do actually overlap. I hope that was focusing on my face. Oh my gosh. Being really frustrating if it's like, oh look at this candle. So instead of just being sustainable, and of course the definition of sustainability, which is not like a thing that companies have to necessarily follow, but the actual definition of it is being able to do X, Y, or Z activity continuously without it having to stop. So that is legit what sustainable means. It doesn't mean that it's good for the planet, it doesn't mean anything is saved, any animals are saved, anything like that. It just means that the activity can continue. And it doesn't even mean that it doesn't cause harm to the planet whilst that activity continues. I get frustrated at the lack of like legal stronghold around these buzzwords. This is the e.l.f. glitter adhesive, you don't need much of it. So Blue Beauty, from everything that I've read about it, is meant to be green beauty but with an edge in terms of making the world better afterwards with a particular focus on the oceans in terms of the charities that are normally chosen to actually be supported you ideally want to have transparent supply chains you ideally want to have a number of other things but we should really talk about the actual difference between the two of them shall we green beauty typically typified by buzzwords such as Sustainable, natural, organic, prioritizing plant-based things, which I, I'm vegan, I shouldn't say no to that, that's, that's 
better. Um, chemical free, which we know impossible. And typically Green Beauty has got reduced packaging or refillable packaging or like there is something that they've done to make the packaging like just a little bit better for the planet as well. Oh, and then also sometimes they become B Corp certified. I've already got a video all about B Corp certification and beauty brands which are just up here as well. You can always tell when it's a ColourPop eyeshadow because it's powdery. So is that too shady? Ooh. If you want a video about ColourPop and what I think their future is, by the way, let me know down below because I'm keen for that. So for Blue Beauty, you have all of what we just talked about for Green Beauty plus added extras. It's like you have like little Jiminy Cricket on your shoulder right here. So typically what Blue Beauty brands have is they want to be able to have more of a transparent supply chain. They want things to be sourced more locally. Um, and they're typically more tied to charities. They have like 1% for the planet profit or like 1% of the profit can go to planet um, good things and like that sort of stuff. That's typically what it is when it comes to Blue Beauty. So it's like there is a Blue Beauty um, playbook which the founder has come out with as well and then also for Blue Beauty you have like more of a community mindset so like supporting local providers like getting ingredients locally etc etc now I've talked about the inaccessibility to do this as a business as well because um, in order to actually make products that everyone wants sometimes actually most of the time you need to be able to source that from global places so it's really really hard to be able to just be like source everything locally because that's not practical for pretty much anyone. It's really important to note that neither Green nor Beauty have hard and fast rules that they have to like live by in order to be able to call themselves Green or Blue. Now this is where it does like get contentious because of course you can have issues with companies just putting on like minimalist packaging, saying that they donate a little bit to like a charity once a year and saying that something is like organic. If you know me, you know I'm not a fan of organic anyway, but like the terms of being able to call the product organic is actually not like 100% of the product ingredients need to be organic. So like there's a lot of like greenwashing and now blue washing that is happening because of this movement. I know that there's companies like Garnier who have like really jumped on this, but of course they're owned by L'Oreal, so we don't like them anyway. So both of these are honestly just very wishy-washy. They sound really good, but like the limit does not exist for like who can actually count themselves as being green beauty or blue beauty. And then you have to like rely on people that are like really, really into like watching everything and making sure that they're holding companies accountable. And it's like who has the time for keeping track of all of this without actual hard and fast rules and proof that needs to be shown for something to be able to fall under a particular category as in like being better for everyone and the environment and the planet and whatever then this is where we get bad actors come in. I'm not saying that green and blue beauty haven't started from like good roots with good intentions. I'm just saying the fact that it's, it's easy to take advantage of and people are easily tricked because you get decision fatigue, there is so much choice out there, it's really really hard to be able to know if it's a good company that you're supporting or a bad company. So of course you could be waiting to get the Beauty Hero seal of approval going on to your product and then if you're stocked in their shop then that means that you know consumers can trust you. But it's like is that really practical for everyone especially since they want to be able to just support local brands and then that's kind of gatekeeping against the international community because like I said they're based in California and then that means it's just American brands and should that be something that we're wanting to model things off all around the world and recreate this whole thing personally I think it'd be better if um, actually governments just got involved and actually put some decent laws down for companies to have to follow in terms of like reducing their waste rubbish power um, exploitation of people, etc, etc, etc. I would much rather the governments of the world combine, get involved, try and make a difference in ways that will actually matter, rather than the entire onus being put on the consumer. <sighs> Another one of my issues with a lot of green beauty and blue beauty brands is the fact that their colour range is actually not very inclusive. So like, there are some brands that are really, really good at making sure that they are inclusive and they do think about everyone's not only skin tone, but skin type as well. A lot of them, from what I've seen, tend to typically cater towards people with sort of my complexion and maybe a little bit deeper. And so that's one of my um, concerns with this. Or like they don't really have much of an olive focus, um, which is of course a bit when you think about it. Um, 
So yeah, I do honestly worry quite a bit when it comes to the overall inclusivity of a lot of these brands. So hopefully, after the hundreds of videos that I've made, you know that I am a pro-GMO <laughs> and I'm not really here for organic. If I buy organic products, it's just because they're a cruelty-free brand and I like the actual products themselves. It's not because it's organic. So my biggest fear when it comes to this whole green beauty, blue beauty stuff is just the fact that not all of it is really based in science and the push for um, chemical free, no nasty chemicals, whatever other BS saying that is being used and the big push for organic really does worry me. In terms of the scientific consensus around using um, GM Honestly, if you want, I will make a separate video on genetic modification and um, why people shouldn't need to be as scared of it as what they are because it is something that has been dear to my heart for ages and I talk about this message all the time but if you want all of the resources, if you want to know what the scientific consensus is and everything, let me know in the comments down below because I will happily do a video on GM and I mean like I'm, I'm pretty biased towards it as you can see but I didn't used to be this way, I used to actually be like organic skewing. I'm just going to put it out there. If you want, I can do that. Just let me know. I've just put my lashes on. These are the hair ones, by the way, which I did wear in the original post right here. The rain ASMR has just gotten a lot more intense. So what do I think about all of like this whole situation with Blue Beauty and if it is even an improvement on Green Beauty? Let's discuss. So I've talked about this many, many times, right? The fact that I want good companies to exist, I want companies to be based on more charity, like that's why I've highlighted companies like Thrive Cosmetics, I want companies to be focused on the way that the people that source the ingredients are treated, the way that people that create the products are treated, I want there to be transparent supply chains, I want to make sure that everyone's been given a living wage, I want to make sure that obviously no animal testing happens and the products are vegan, and I want to make sure that the products are high quality, refillable packaging. I agree with so many of the things to do with Blue Beauty and Green Beauty and of course that whole community focus and that local focus is really important which I mean like I've done a lot of videos based on local beauty and I'm still working on other ones based on local beauty right now to review the products for you. So it's like in theory I should be really pro at Blue Beauty and I should love the work that's happened. I love some of it. So for me, my biggest fear around the whole clean beauty, blue beauty, green beauty is the anti-science rhetoric around no chemicals and organic. So that is where I'm really worried because like I've been saying, I am an advocate for GM. I don't see any issue with using chemicals in your skincare because literally everything has chemicals. And we have many, many issues with companies wanting to jump on the fact that we have consumers that are, for the most part, not really educated on this stuff because who are you meant to like listen to when it's hard to get accurate scientific information because there's issues around publishing of papers and a lot of papers are actually published and people don't know how to read scientific papers and the conclusions from them. <laughs> this is why, again, I'm a fan of scientific consensus. And with the boost of like this whole anti-science movement and the fact that you've got people saying that natural is best, well, natural's not always best because like what we've talked about in the whole clean beauty video which I did up here, a lot of these ingredients haven't actually gone through safety tests, so you actually will probably be using ingredients that are less safe, less stable, there's nothing wrong with preservatives, there's nothing wrong with parabens, there's nothing wrong with SLS, there's nothing wrong with sulfates, like the thing is that we've had these buzzwords pushed around so much that it's kind of become a part of our collective consciousness to think that all of this stuff is bad. Even I sometimes when I see a product I'm like oh it's paraben free and then I'm like wait a second why does that matter because it doesn't matter. The things that matter are making sure that people are taken care of the fact that we have refillable products, we have compostable products, we have products that are doing good for the communities and for the environment. Like I love that aspect, I don't love the anti-science aspect and that is where my biggest concern is because green beauty is already like so greenwashed beyond belief now and so anti-science it's really worrying. You'll sometimes see me even using products which will be categorized as like clean beauty or green beauty or blue beauty because they're, they're very much overlapping. You've got a scale of like clean chemicals, no, green, natural sort of sustainable, blue, all of that, and a conscience. So yeah, it's, it's like a sliding scale of things. Like, if anything, I'd want to support the blue beauty ones, but get rid of the organic, get rid of the natural. 
<laughs> and then we're there. <laughs> that is my final conclusion. I've of course got all of my sources in the description. I'll of course want to engage with you in the comments and I'll see you lovelies next Tuesday with another new video. I'm probably actually going to have some review videos come out on some Sundays as well because I've been using some products for a long time. So now I'm actually in a position to be able to tell you what I think of them. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, since we're talking about Blue Beauty, please put in the wave emoji. Thank you so much for watching, lovelies. I really, really do appreciate it. We've hit 550 subscribers right now. Super, super excited about that. Over a halfway point for getting to a thousand. I just want to hit that thousand so badly. Um, if you like, comment, share, subscribe, all of those things really, really do help me out and I really appreciate any support that you give. Thank you, lovelies. Bye. So if you're not already, please do subscribe. And also, I wish the camera had focused on my face. Gosh, I need to do that whole thing again. So, green boo. Blah, 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 blah. Look at my face, look at my face, look at my face, look at my. Look at my. Thank you. It's so weird I'm trying to film thumbnails, but oh, oh, look at that glow. Ooh, ooh. This is, of course, the Cinderella makeup, but I haven't put my hair up because I just washed it this morning and I put some treatments in it and it's just air dried and it feels so lovely and I didn't want to heat style it, okay? I'm sorry. Sorry. But I'm also not sorry because I just like to take care of my hair. 